Solution stoichiometry problems on their own are massive and nauseating to some degree. So it's a bit terrifying when we think, hey, all these things that we had for solubility from our um, compounds list, things like this, for example, in this problem, we're going to have calcium carbonate. Uh, calcium carbonate's insoluble. Well, we discussed previously that insoluble doesn't mean it doesn't dissolve. It just means it's a weak electrolyte that doesn't dissolve much. So when we have a reaction, like in this case, we're going to have sodium uh, carbonate and calcium chloride. Let's write that out. We've got sodium carbonate, aqueous solution, 300 mils of 0.2 molar. And we're going to add to that our 600 mils of 0.130 molar calcium chloride. And we will end up with... I wish I were more clever here with the coloring. Um, calcium carbonate as a solid and sodium chloride as aqueous. We've got our table of reactants and products. I'm just going to put a squiggly line to indicate yes. Yes, I did that. Put a 2 right there and it's balanced. When we look at our solubility rules, that has a group 1 metal, so we expect it to be soluble. That has chlorine without lead, silver, or mercury, so we expect that to be soluble. That has a group 1 metal and chlorine without lead, silver, or mercury, so we expect it to be soluble. But then we have calcium carbonate, and carbonates tend to be insoluble unless it's with group 1 or uh, NH4. Some tables you might see slightly soluble for calcium carbonate, but we can get a quantitative picture of that if we look at the KSP, but I'm not there yet, all right? In straight up double replacement reactions, if you watch the video on double replacement reactions, this is a solid and we say it precipitates out. Now we know there's no such thing as zero in an equilibrium system, and it can't be true that there are no calcium ions and there are no carbonate ions from this. So what we're going to do in this problem is take this information, do stoichiometry, and then fix it with an equilibrium system. All right. So once again in slow-mo, do stoichiometry, assume everything goes this way, and then fix it with equilibrium later. And in order to do our stoichiometry, I'm going to set it up kind of like I did in a different video where I did stoichiometry and it looked like a nice problem. So I want to make a note off to the side here that what we're going to be doing is stoichiometry. In fact, I'm going to double cheat and I'm going to do stoichiometry with concentrations. And to get those concentrations, we're going to have to uh, wave our hands a little bit um, and split this up. In fact, I'll do that a little bigger here. I do want to point out we have 300 milliliters of an aqueous solution and 600 milliliters of an aqueous solution. So our total volume is going to be 900 milliliters and that's 0 0.900 liters. The reason I care is because I'm mixing these solutions and I'm going to have to calculate the corresponding change in concentration. And you could take these numbers and do stoichiometry with moles and turn them into concentrations later. I think that's possibly a little more work, uh, possibly a little less intuitive. If you have uh, the concentration and they're in the same solution, you can do that stoichiometry with those concentrations. And we'll do that over here with uh, C1V1 equals C2V2, which is a pretty common equation. Uh, let's give it a try. For our Na2CO3, we have 0 0.300 liters, 0 0.200 molar, over our 0 0.900 liters. So if you're wondering what's going on there, these are dilution equation. C1V, oops, C1V1 equals C2V2. All right, and true to my word, I didn't even put them in the same order. This ends up being um, 0.067 molar Na2CO3. And I want to do something with that right now. This is soluble. It's going to dissociate. If we were doing a double replacement equation, we would split it into ions to get the complete ionic equation so we could turn it into the net ionic equation, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to dissociate it right away because I can use these numbers later. I want to multiply by 2 for the sodium 
which means that I have um, 0.13 molar sodium ions. Okay, So when I combine these solutions, I have 0.13 molar sodium ions. When I combine these solutions, I'm going to have 0 0.067 molar carbonate ions. All right. So these numbers right here are of some importance to me. We'll do the same thing with our calcium chloride. We have 0 0.600 liters, and that's 0.130 molar. And now we've gone from 600 mils to 900 mils, 0 0.900 liters, and we end up with 0 0.087 molar CaCl2. We're going to do the same thing. This is an aqueous species. Uh, strong electrolyte, and we're going to say it dissociates times 1 because there's 1 calcium times 2 because there's 2 chlorines. So you get 0 0.087 molar Ca2 plus and uh, double that so we get 0 0.17 approximately molar Cl minus. It turns out like I cut a corner here in a very convenient way because in this problem, I want us to calculate the concentra concentration of all species in the final solution. I guess, in my infinite wisdom, I never mentioned that, so... Calculate the concentration of all species at equilibrium, all right? That is our goal in this problem, and uh, we'll see what we can do. As I said earlier, um, we've got stoichiometry. We're experts at stoichiometry by now, and we're going to have to start cutting corners a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to work with this Na2CO3. We had 0 0.067 molar. And for the calcium chloride, I had 0 0.087 molar. Now, when we were doing stoichiometry ad nauseum before, and I was like, have and need and excess and theoretical, now it's time to just look at this and know. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. I have more of the calcium chloride. Uh, that means I have stoichiometrically more since it's one-to-one. -one. Excess reactant, limiting reactant, and uh, that's how this is going to work. We're starting out with none of this and none of this. When we do the math right here, we're going to be losing all of this. It's our limiting reactant. We're going to be losing proportionally one-to-one -one ratio, 0, 6, 7, of that, and that means that we're going to be gaining um, 0.067 of that, and gaining two times that, which is 0.13 of that, which gives us our equilibrium amounts, and I should be careful here, which gives us our final amounts. This is stoichiometry, not ice. I have none of that, and I have 0 0.020 of that left, 0 0.067, and 0.13. Three. All right. This then is what happens after stoic. So stoic got us here. We assumed that it went to completion. Now we have these numbers here. This three theoretically has precipitated out of solution, and I have this right here, and I've got my sodium chloride with those concentrations right there. So what is in our final solution? Well, every ion we started with is the short answer. Normally, when you're doing a solution stoichiometry problem, you'd say, in the final solution, we're looking for aqueous product and excess reactant. In this case, we're looking for every single ion. Where they come from is a slightly different story, but we're looking for everything. Let's uh, set this up then. I'm going to just squint at this and see our solubility equilibrium is the calcium ions and the carbonate ions and the calcium carbonate. In fact, it might not be a bad idea to say, all right, the carbonate ions, the calcium ions, and the calcium carbonate. That's actually what's involved in our equilibrium system. And I'm going to extract that. We have precipitated out calcium carbonate. What's it going to do now? Equilibrium has the answer for us. We're going to get calcium ions and carbonate ions, barely, all right? The KSP in this case, calcium ions, carbonate ions, and I have this value as 8.7 times 10 to the minus 9. And that came from a table. 
This is a straight up solubility problem. We'll do it as ice. Um, this might be a good color for that. Not worried about our solid in the equilibrium system. This we started out as 0 0.020. Aha. And this carbonate we started out with as zero. So this is a non-trivial bit of information. We did stoichiometry. We have some of this here because it was excess, right? This is left over. And then we have this equilibrium system that's going to be based on how much of this we have left over. It's going to be harder to go this way. It's a common ion effect dissociation type of situation. So it's going to be harder to go that way. That number is smaller than it would be if we had had uh, zero there as well. All right, so in terms of things changing, this number has to go up. Equilibrium always shifts towards zeros. This number has to go up, and it's one-to-one -one stoic there. So we end up with 0 0.02 plus s and s. It's a pretty safe bet s is going to be smaller than the 0 0.02. But, again, your calculator can do it. There's no reason to uh, try and assume things and go back and check them. It's not worth the time. So 0 0.02 plus s times our s, and that should equal 8.7 times 10 to the minus 9th. And that gives us a solubility of 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7th. s equals 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. So what is in our final solution? I said everything. That's what's in our final solution. And let's see if I can keep track of that, maybe even with the right colors. We have sodium ions in our final solution. We have sodium ions and carbonate ions. We have calcium ions. Oops, already screwed it up, didn't I? calcium ions, and chloride ions. We happen to know some of these numbers already because I cheated. And when I cheated, I came up with those numbers over here. And I'll see if I can tie that in maybe with uh, a highlighter, like this pink one right here. Sodium ions were a spectator. They're all there in the end, and they were all there in the beginning. So that's where this number is going to come from. Our chloride ions were a spectator, and that is where these ions are going to come from right here. And then how much of the calcium ions and the carbonate ions we have are given to us right there. And I'm going to highlight this for calcium, this for carbonate, and that is what we're going to put right there. All right, the uh, chloride ions from what we wrote before, 0.17 molar Cl minus, and our sodium ions from before, 0.13 molar for our sodium ions. Those were spectators. Everything that you had in the beginning is there at the end, and we in the beginning we had uh, this many moles. We divided it by 0.9 liters. That was our final volume. That's the numbers we have there. These things reacted, and most of it precipitated out. That's why we're not using these numbers. We had to do some stoichiometry to see how much could have precipitated out. 0.067, and almost all of that stayed precipitated out, and that's moles in this case. Molarity, interesting issue. Anyway, as we look at this then, our carbonate concentration is supposed to be S, right? So this is our carbonate ion concentration, 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7th molar. And then our calcium ion concentration is 0.02 plus S, which is just uh, our 0.02. And that is the concentration of all of our species in the final solution, which was our end goal. Once again, essentially a two-step process. Step one do stoichiometry. Step two, take your solid, your precipitate, and figure out how much of it actually goes into solution because you can't have a zero at equilibrium and then you got your answers, all right? Do the stoichiometry, fix it with equilibrium. 
I do want to mention as a quick addendum here, you saw me waving my hand at this. Th these are molarities. I cheated and did stoichiometry using molarities. And that made me kind of a liar at this step right here. We don't, this is plus 0.067 molar. It's a solid. It's not technically in solution. And you know that molarity is moles over the volume in liters. And in this case, we've got a quote-unquote molarity, and we have a volume in liters. So we can get our moles, which is what we'd be more worried about for a solid, as our molarity times our volume in liters. And so our molarity would be 0 0.067, if it were true, times our volume in liters, which is 0 0.900 liters, which gives us 0 0.06 moles of CaCO3. I didn't ask for it. I only wanted the concentration of species present at equilibrium. But full disclosure, we didn't have 0.067 moles of calcium carbonate. I lied by doing that as a molarity, which is totally fine. Uh, we had that many moles of calcium carbonate in the end. So just bear in mind, uh, if you're going to cut corners, remember to put corners back if you need to.